Hi, this is Steve Winery from Imaging R&R, and, and I'm going to show you a tutorial on Perspective Warp. Perspective Warp is one of the great new features in Photoshop Creative Cloud. You get to Perspective Warp in the Edit menu, Edit Perspective Warp. It's about halfway down in the Transform group. Notice all the other transforms are grayed out. Most of the transforms do require a floating layer, not a background layer, or a selection in order to run, but in this case we can apply perspective warp to even a background layer and the perspective warp will simply turn the background layer into a regular floating layer. So what we can do is simply go to edit perspective warp and I'm going to show you two ways to initiate perspective warp. One is to click and that brings up a grid which you could then click on the sides or the corners to adjust and change the shape. I'm going to hit the escape key or click the no sign up there. Either one does the same thing, gets you out of perspective warp. And I'm going to go back to edit perspective warp. And this time I'm going to click and drag. And by clicking and dragging, I can create a grid that is more, or a plane that is more the size that I need. I want something that's going to cover the front of this building, the front face of this little, uh, this little cabana here. So once I've done that, I could then start making my adjustments and as I do that I want to make adjustments that align this grid to the shape of the front here. Now when I I can see that as I first did it the corner isn't quite level. I'll show you a couple ways to fix that in a minute but what I'm going to do is adjust the right side of the plane here to that corner of the building even though that in itself isn't perfectly vertical. And then I'm going to click and drag a second grid. Now as I drag that second grid and I get close to the first one, see that blue highlight appears and that means they're going to snap together. So when I let go it snaps and adjusts. It snaps to the top pin and the bottom pin of that front plane. But you don't have to have the two planes attached. I'm going to press Command or Control Z to undo that. You do have a level of undo within Perspective Warp. Notice that I have a little balloon help here popping up. I'm going to dismiss that and I'll just walk you through it. So what I can do is uh, click and drag that grid and if I hold down the Command key on the Mac or the Control key on Windows it doesn't snap and I can actually have two independent planes that way. But in this case, for this particular image, I'm going to have them connected. I just wanted to show you that there is a way to have two planes that aren't connected. So I'm going to, again, press Command or Control Z to undo that. And without holding the Command or Control key down, I'm going to click and drag, let those two snap to each other. And then I'm going to adjust this right plane to the perspective of the right side of this building. Now my ultimate goal is usually with Perspective Warp to change the perspective, as you can imagine, of a feature in a photograph. And like many things in Photoshop, you could apply Perspective Warp to things other than buildings, but it is great for architectural details or architectural renderings where you want to change the perspective of something in the image. In this case, this image is a lot of foreshortening. It was shot with a fairly wide angle lens, so I'm going to make this building look like it was shot with a little bit less of a wide angle lens. So now that I've adjusted that grid so that it is matching up to the lines in this building. Now let me get that roof line a little better. I think I can improve on that. I really do want these grid lines to follow the lines in the image itself. So I'll fix that. That and the quality of what I'm the, what I'm doing here. I'm this is really a lot of the work. I'm really trying to get this as precise as I can because the better the quality of this initial grid, the better the quality of your end result. So now that I have done that, I can go up to the top here and click on this warp button in the 
options bar area and when I click on warp now I am in warp mode and I could grab the the individual handles to warp this image I'm going to press command or control minus just so I can see this handle that's drifting off the screen here a little bit or off my canvas and when I move these you can see the building or the underlying pixels actually move and warp with this these planes that I've created around this building. So what I can do is I can actually take this, uh, I'll use these pins to adjust and basically kind of turn and I'll make this a little more, less distorted in the foreshortening of the building and create the effect or the illusion of if I were using not so wide angle a lens which is startling in and of itself. Only problem here is I've got this picnic bench getting distorted a little bit. And that's one of the hazards of perspective warp. If you have two elements that are very close to each other, you have to go back in and do a fair amount of retouching. Use your history brush tool to try to massage that back into place. Or initially, you could separate out where you're warping onto its own layer. Or I could have separated the picnic bench out onto its own layer. I'm going to hit the escape key and just start over. But before I do, I'm going to set this up a little better. And this is the kind of thing you may want to do when you're working with Perspective Warp if you know there are two elements close together. But I'm going to go to the uh, the, the uh, Content Aware Move tool, which is just great for moving elements in an image. And I'm going to make a selection with the move, Content Aware Move tool around this picnic bench. And then I'm going to move that picnic bench over away from that cabana. Now that I moved it over, let me change my adaptation method here to get the best results. Let's see, it's always a good idea to go from strict to loose and then see what you have in between. Uh, if I go medium, I've got pretty good results but I do see some artifacts in here. That, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I can go in and retouch that later, or I could simply do it now by deselecting and taking, let's say, my healing brush tool. And I'll use my right bracket key to make that a little bigger. And I'll just heal some grass up in there. Maybe I'll heal some of this tree, and that's starting to look a little better. I'll go into the, let me just take the clone stamp. Clone a little bit of that few branches out here. All right, now that pretty much fixed that area. So again, I could go back in and tweak that after the fact, but now I've moved that picnic bench to the side and I can come back up here to edit perspective warp and again I'm going to click and drag that front plane adjust the front plane I'll do this a little quicker now that you know what I'm doing and get those adjusted to the perspective of the cabana here you can see the lines matching up as I adjust this grid. And now I'm going to bring my second grid that's going to snap into place and adjust the lines of this like so. And then go one more. And then go up here to the warp button go to warp and now I can go back and do my adjustments my warping but I'm not warping the picnic bench as you can see so I'm not getting that result in the end I'm probably going to need to crop the image but that's okay I'm not getting that great distortion of the picnic bench that I was getting earlier there's another trick and that has to do with the ability of this feature to upright your image or level it. And you'll see some lines up here in the options bar and the toolbar up here. And there's 
to correct for vertical perspective, horizontal perspective, and an automatic overall correction. You can also, this is a neat trick, hold down the shift key and as I hover over one of my, any one of my grids, you'll see that turn yellow or any one of the, the edges of the grid rather. And so I'll hold down the shift and, and click, shift click on that and notice that becomes perfectly vertical. If you shift click on a horizontal constraint at the edge, that will become perfectly horizontal. I'm going to undo that, Commander Control Z, because I would not want to do that, but making this center one perfectly vertical did help the perspective of this image. You can always go back to layout mode to change your grid a little bit. If in your end results you feel that you were not getting the best results. And there's another case where the shift key does something. If I hold down the shift key, I can move parts of the grid perfectly horizontally or perfectly vertically. I'm going to go back to warp. And let's say the results here are pretty good and I've got this looking much more like it was shot with a 35 millimeter lens and less distorted. But in any case, I can come up here and simply click the check mark or tap the enter key on the keyboard to commit the perspective warp, and there's the warp. If something like the picnic bench is getting distorted here, you have lots of options. You could always, for instance, make a selection over that area. Notice that my background layer is now turned into a floating layer, or layer zero. So I can go right up to Edit, Free Transform, and then click on the grid, the transform warp grid up here in the options bar, which puts me up into warp mode. And then I can tweak individual portions of this, which lets me just get that nice and neat the way it originally looked, or maybe even better than the way it originally looked, because this was pretty warped from the weather in the first place. Click the check mark, the select, and then I would just go in here with the something like the content aware spot healing brush. And I'll just click there and shift click down here. And that fixes those few lines. And I, if you have anything else that you need to fix, you can do with one of these tools, or you always have the option of cropping into your image a little bit. Anyway, that's Perspective Warp and a few tricks around Perspective Warp. Perspective Warp is one of the terrific new tools in Photoshop Creative Cloud. Enjoy it. This is Steve Weinrieb. Thanks to Whole Cloth Productions for hosting and posting this video. And I will see you next time.